Hey y'all, welcome to another Mastering the Draw license application strategy video with Hunt and Fool. I'm Garth Jensen, and today we're gonna to be talking about Colorado after the draw. And basically what we're gonna be going over is different, different ways after the draw to get your hands on a, on a elk tag, deer tag, what have you, but just put a tag in your pocket after we've already gone through the draw Maybe you were unsuccessful and are still shopping. So we're going to talk about the turn back tags um, and if, you know some of their policies, how to acquire them, what happens to that tag, things like that. Um, and then we're going to go through some other tag opportunities like over the counter, landowner tags, things of that nature. So let's jump in. First off, reissue tags. Um, question we get a lot here at Hunt and Fool is, can I surrender my tag? Let's say you draw a tag. And now you can't participate in that hunt for one reason or another. Um, it's not a medical issue, but maybe you got another hunt or maybe you have a vacation planned um, and can't participate in it. The big thing is you, you can surrender your permit, but it has to be 30 days prior to the start of that season. So let's say your season starts on October 1st. You have to turn that thing in 30 days prior to October 1st. Let's just assume there was 30 days in the month before that. So you have to turn it in by September 1st. Um, now, once you turn that tag in, you're gonna have a couple different options. Um, you can either forfeit the tag fee and get your points reinstated. You won't earn a point for that year, but you'll get your points reinstated. Or you can select to have a refund for the tag and they will take all of your points. So all your points will be forfeited for that species. So. Those are your two options once you turn that tag back in, like you say, as long as it's 30 days before, but you have the option of either getting a refund and having them and forfeiting your points or getting your points reinstated and paying for the tag. So where does my tag, where does, where, where does my surrender tag go? So there's two different ways that the, that the Department of Wildlife or the Colorado Parks and Wildlife will reissue that tag. The first one is, is any hunts that are taking six points or more to draw, they will go down through a list of alternates. And I think they go through five alternates and they go down through and call each one of those and see if they want that tag. Now, if they take that tag, their points will be forfeited. So they will have to use their points in order to do that, but they do go through that process. And oftentimes the alternates don't take that because either they have plans or they didn't, they weren't sure that quite sure at this point if they wanted to burn those points, you know, this late in the game. So that's what they'll do for hunts that are six points or more as they go down through the next five alternates and see if they want it. Then after that, any, any tags that are returned that take fewer than six points, or if the alternates didn't want it, all those tags will be loaded on the initial list, which will come available Tuesday, August 10th. And you'll be able to view that list. Now, Here's where it changed a little bit. So this is kind of going back to the original, um, the original version of the reissue list that Colorado came out with the first year. After that, they switched to another way of issuing the tags where it was totally random. They always had this initial list um, that would come up the first in line and man, it's a crapshoot. It's a free for all, everyone jumps on there. And this year it's going to be on August 11th. So you'll be able to view the list on August 10th of all the tags that have been turned back um, and are now on this reissue list, which will then be transferred over to the leftover list and you'll be able to buy them on Wednesday, August 11th. Just remember that it is a free for all at this point in time. I mean, it just, it can be a madhouse. So that's when the first one goes on sale. Then every, every Tuesday after that, you will have a list come up at 11 a.m. that you can go on and view Anything that has been turned back in that they decide to put on that reissue list will be viewable at Tuesday at 11. Then again, Wednesday at 11 a.m., you're gonna go in there and you're gonna have the availability to buy those tags. And they're gonna transfer everything off that reissue list you've been looking at to the leftover list. Once it hits that leftover tag list, man, you jump on there 11 a.m., you just get your little fingers warmed up and punch in that hunt code, enter in your credit card information, out you go. Hopefully you're lucky and get that. Now let's jump into other tag opportunities. 
First one's gonna be over-the-counter tags. Over-the-counter elk, those are the only over-the-counter tags in Colorado that are truly over-the-counter. So they're unlimited in number for archery, second, and third rifle. All other seasons are on a limited quota basis. Once you buy an over-the-counter elk tag for whatever season that you bought it for, you know, archery, second, or third, every unit that is enrolled in the over-the-counter elk program for that season, you can hunt. Now, obviously, if you're coming from out of state, you're probably gonna wanna stick to one or two units that are adjoined to each other. You can't jump around from the north end of the state to the south end of the state. But just know that you have a wide selection of units that you could potentially hunt with an over-the-counter elk tag. They will, they will go on sale August 3rd. Um, that's just kind of an arbitrary deadline that you can buy them on because after that, you can buy over-the-counter elk tags all the way up into the season so long as once the season starts you do have to buy it from a CPW office location. So just remember you can buy that from any licensed vendor up until the season starts and then after that you will have to purchase it from a CPW location. Let's jump into landowner tags. Now landowner tags is a hot item. Everyone wants them. There's not enough of them out there. They're kind of hard to acquire because of a few stipulations that we'll go into. Um, the first one is, is these landowner vouchers have to be drawn by the landowner. Just the same as general public, when we go into the draw, we have to draw our tags as well. Now they're, now they're done the same time. So truthfully, it's, it's a similar situation where the landowner might have enough preference points. And he's like, yeah, I, I can draw this tag. I know I'm gonna get it. Um, but he's gonna have a few applications in there for maybe some other private you know, land that he has, where he doesn't have enough points to necessarily guarantee that tag. So he's got to wait and see what he has available. So at any rate, just know that this draw does not take place till May. So we don't really see a lot of these vouchers come, coming available until these landowners actually know what they have. Then we start seeing them populate. Um, and then you start to see more of an abundance of what's available. The other stipulation is they must be sold directly from the landowner or ranch manager to the hunter. There can be no third party interaction in there. There can't be any tag brokering. Um, the only thing that, uh, that we can do is the landowner can list, their, can list their tag with sites like Hunt and Fool. And we do have a landowner tag page on our website. that You can actually go to and they get a free, free listing. So once they get that voucher, they can go on there and list it on our website for sale. Now you do have to contact that voucher, excuse me. Now you do have to contact the landowner or ranch manager directly in order to secure that landowner voucher. You can talk to us a little bit about the unit and about what to expect if it is a unit wide tag. But otherwise, like I say, Every, all the dealings that you have for landowner tags in Colorado have to be directly from the purchaser or the, the hunter to the landowner or ranch manager. Otherwise, you could get into a little bit of trouble through CPW. So just make sure that you're contacting the, the, land, the landowner directly um, to secure that voucher. And remember that on our website, we do have notifications and through our app, um, through the Hunt Fool app, you can go on there and select notifications and get notified every time a landowner tag is added. You can break it down to where you can say, I only want Colorado deer vouchers. So, you know, send me, send me a notification, text, email, what have you. Send me a notification when a landowner tag comes available. And then as soon as that thing is added or populated to the list, it'll send you a notification. You can jump on there and see what it is. Hope that helps and kind of explains a little bit more about what is available if you're not one of the lucky few who gets drawn this year. Um, there is still some other opportunities to put a tag in your pocket. And remember, the only truly over-the-counter tags that are available are elk, but there is landowner tags available for an array of species. So get in there. It's not over if you don't draw. If there's any questions you have, leave them in the comments below. We'll take care of them. And if you found this video helpful, Man, make sure and subscribe, and then you won't miss out on any of the upcoming videos we have planned.